The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN headquarters. And Tom is not with us this morning, but we're fortunate to have our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, filling in. Basil, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? I'm very well. I watched a uh, half hour of the marathon yesterday right I, here in Newton. I was about Amazing. to ask you. I'm sure I heard the weather was beautiful the up there. The weather turned out the morning. I've never seen such storms on a, on a okay. marathon day before with the wind and the rain. It just disappeared. And it was a very nice day. I heard maybe it was almost 70 degrees runners. up there, right? Yeah, maybe too hot for some of the runners. But I have to tell you, so impressed with seeing thousands of runners go by. Whereas before, you see a lot of people walking. There were very few walking, a lot of people running very well. Um, I, was, I was impressed with the stamina that people had, and I could never do a marathon. Yeah, I, I don't think I have one in, my, in me as well. Uh, quite a day, of course, for Boston. I'm always jealous to be up there. Patriots Day, Marathon Monday. Glad to hear it went well. Back to the markets, positive, starting Tuesday off. We got a big day. Earnings, Dow up 58 points, trading 26,443. S&P's right now up six points, trading at 29.11. NASDAQ, positive by 31, trading at 8,007. We've already got earnings, Basil, this morning from Bank of America. United right. Health, Johnson & Johnson. Tonight we get IBM. Uh, after the bell, we get Netflix. Big one, of course, after the bell. And to talk about it all, we're going to jump over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim. Folks, right after this program, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Fast Market, they're going to break down everything. And man, if you trade options, you trade defined risk, get on over to TFNN, hit that TD Ameritrade banner, get an account open because, man, this is a great time of year. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Basil. How are we doing? We're doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm good. You know, just dissecting what happened in earnings already this morning, getting ready for right, really the signature, kind of the headline earnings release of the week, and that's Netflix tonight. So should be pretty interesting. It's... You know, we've had a lot of discussions last week about Netflix and Apple's effect and Disney's effect on Netflix. There's been a lot of talk of competition. We'll see what the real numbers are in Netflix tonight. And it was interesting, Kevin. Um, I don't know if you saw. So you had Disney coming out, right? Hulu taking out AT&T's yeah. stake in um, in Hulu. So they're just uh, Disney, the majority stakeholder in Hulu. Now I believe you have Comcast with a minority share. Iger was saying he may just take them out as well. Um, you can see them kind of consolidating that power, right? I, I really, uh, I woke up and I kind of smirked. I said, man, they are not pausing in terms of, I see that bundle coming down the line and I'm sure there may be some questions in the Netflix earnings call um, talking about that whole scenario yeah we talked about this yesterday on the air um, you know the interest in Hulu is not just passing I think there's going to be something done pretty quickly with Hulu you can see the um, everything all the chips being lined up pretty quickly here I think you're going to see some type of streaming service with Hulu pretty quickly uh, in the news coming up I think that that will be a discussion topic for Netflix earnings as well, but yeah, Hulu, the, the news on Hulu seems to be moving quite quickly. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, and myself, so I've never subscribed to Hulu. I know they have a variety of great programs on there. The Disney Plus plan, probably geared towards families, as even Disney admits, but it'd be interesting to see. Of course, Disney owns ESPN. ESPN has the ESPN Plus. Uh, then they have the Hulu. If you package all three of them, man, you'd have kids programming, you'd have Hulu for the kind of intermediate regular programming, and then you'd have ESPN Plus for the sports programming. Um, quite a lineup. Right, and it sounds like you package all them together, you're still relatively competitive to some of the pricing out there, and that's a pretty big package you can order for a fairly reasonable price. I agree, man. I agree. Um, so we get IBM as well. This morning we've already yep. had United Health, Johnson & Johnson, 
Uh, Bank yeah, of America. So connectivity in United Health, don't you think? Yeah, definitely, right? So Some pretty blowout numbers. Oof. A nice recovery this morning. Traded high at 39, and then a pretty dramatic candle yeah. here from from about nine o'clock on, where they took it down. You know, now down. Well, it's out, actually it's off its lows. Um, down just three quarters of a percent here, but yeah, pretty uh, pretty substantial sell off there. But but make no mistake, some good numbers. I just think there's uncertainty about the future of some of these healthcare companies, and you know what uncertainty does to stocks. Yeah, quite a pullback, man. Like you said, almost 240 down to below 226 right out of the gate. Um, quite a reaction for sure. Yeah, and that sell off Tommy is not for the meek. No, man, no. We pulled the chart up <laughs> on that TD Ameritrade platform, man. It is a rocket ship to the downside. Um, Johnson & Johnson, pretty cool action as yeah. well in terms of it trades higher up to about 7.30 in the morning, maybe almost reaching 140, goes back down to 137.5, and it goes the other way at the open from about 137.5 up to 145. Interesting thing, Kevin, I mean, their legal costs, right, going through the roof, which yeah. is hurting their earnings, um, but maybe the market just seeing that as a temporary cost of doing business. Exactly. You know, I think this market, you know, remember, it was Johnson and Johnson that had that dramatic, catastrophic sell-off not a while ago. And since then, in all honesty, the, the, you know the stock has has been fairly strong. Yes. Since that sell-off, so it'll be interesting to see. You know, they, they they've got some headline risk, as you know, Tommy. So this is probably one that the volatility levels and the movements that they have will all be a little bigger than normal for sure. Yeah, I mean, I just pulled that up on the chart. It's pretty remarkable. So it coincides. The, the move began uh, on December 14th. They hit the low like a lot of other stocks on Christmas Eve, 121 on the dot. And uh, this, this morning we were up to basically above 140. So quite a comeback from that level. Yeah, you know, like I said, everyone who trades Johnson & Johnson right now and looks at it as, as an investment has got to figure in and factor in their legal that what everything that's going on with their lawsuits so it's a little tricky it is sure. man and just to jump over i pulled them up because folks they are staggering numbers on uh, the legal side of things alone let's see so they spent 423 million dollars on litigation expenses during the first quarter on top of 1.29 billion during the fourth quarter so that is quite a number and that's um Basically, the main reason why net income on the first quarter, $3.75 billion, down from $4.37 uh, a year earlier, obviously hitting that. And then we'll wrap it up with this morning. Bank of America shares down a bit, Kevin. I mean, quite a number. As they, they rise on profit 6% to $7.3 billion, but uh, kind of continuing yesterday with the banks, you got Bank of America down 2.23%, yeah. I'm looking at as of right now, almost at session lows, yeah. You know, and unfortunately, Tommy, we spoke about this on the air uh, the last couple of days. J.P. Morgan caused the whole sector to rally, right? And so they took a lot of the upside move out of some of these banks. So playing the banks after fr last Friday in the J.P. Morgan rally has kind of been tricky, right? Because even, even though they're coming out with good numbers, some of the stocks like Goldman yesterday giving back some of the earnings that they had before. And almost just like Johnson Johnson, December 24th, man, $22 Bank of America. It's still sitting at 29 quite a number. Folks, right after this program, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team, Fast Market. Lots going on. Netflix earnings tonight. Check it out. Kevin Hinks, thanks so much for the update. We look forward to the program. Thank thanks you, for having me on, Tommy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Basil. Basil and I will be right back, folks. Stay tuned. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets in positive territory. Dow up about 61 points currently. S&P is in the positive by 7. NASDAQ in the positive by 39, a good half a percent in the NASDAQ. So, Basil, maybe if we could jump around to um, Netflix. I had seen you had that chart up there. And um, as Kevin said, kind of the main attraction for even this week with one of the FANG stocks, an important one nonetheless. And um, I think it gets even more interesting that you just had Disney launch their service like we were talking about. You just had Disney solidify power within Hulu, which would make sense if they really were going to start packaging it. Um, so what are, you, what are you looking at when you're looking at Netflix? So if I was just to, to disregard the fact that was, there was earnings this afternoon, okay. I would look at uh, three things at uh, Netflix. Out of the FANG stocks, Netflix, and I discussed this earlier last year when I said that my, the FANG stocks that I'm looking that's uh, Facebook, Apple, I'm including Amazon, uh, that's Netflix and Google, I still call it Google, though yep. it's Alphabet. Um, Netflix was the one, first of all, I've never really understood Netflix, so on a fundamental level, I'm, I'm out of the loop there. Uh, this seems to me a lot more complicated than people seem to assume. There's a lot going on. So just looking at it price-wise, it went from 423 in June of last year to 231. Yeah, so that's almost cut in half, right? And this is one of the really big cap. This is what, look at this chart. From uh, December of 2017, when it was trading in the 170s, it goes up to the high of June of 2018. 18, it goes to 423. Every single month had a higher peak, so there was no, there was no, just I call it a floating letter. In other words, that letter E, the fifth highest peak, didn't make a peak until July. And what happened was, when it when it rebounded, it rebounded about a half, maybe you could say a six one eight retracement. But what's important is that the technicals were not nearly as good as the other 
fang stocks. Okay. This to me has been one of the weaker ones. So now I'm looking at it and I'm saying, okay, in terms of the V-shaped pattern that we've seen in so many places, this has started a V-shaped pattern in the weekly chart and then a stall underneath the last peak of importance, which was October the 5th, the week of the 5th, at uh, 386. It went to this peak C in the daily and the MACD is good, not anywhere as strong as it was even at the retracement level, if you go back to that October level. And the stochastic was good, at, but now it's pulled back to 81%. On a purely uh, technical basis, I would say that based on the visual evidence, 350, 342 is the low that was made yesterday. If that's taken out in the next two days, that's not going to be very good for uh, Netflix. It's not going to say it's breaking down. It's just saying it's just not participating in the QQQ, the index 100. It's not participating in the FANG uh, area. And it's going to remain weak because obviously, if I look at it, the technicals are going to suggest that it just hasn't got the firepower to be able to rally above the 380 level. And that's going to be the clue. I'm going to give it two weeks. If in two weeks' time it's trading above 380, I'm going to say that is really good action because all of a sudden that monthly chart is starting to, to push uh, to levels that make the magnet of 423 come into place. But I think it's got a lot of work, and I, I, I've got a feeling that it's still going to be very choppy in Netflix uh, for a little while, and it's going to probably trade between... Uh, the 365, 372 area, and the three, 348, maybe even retest 340 area for a little while longer. I just don't think it's really just chart-wise. And the daily chart, well, we've seen it in Johnson & Johnson and, and Disney that the technicals were not that good, and suddenly you've got a news-related upside spiral. That's what it's going to take here to change it. But I, I just don't see it. I think there's a lot of pressure on Netflix right now, technically. Yeah, I mean, quite a run that it's had since that December 20, was it December 24th? 231 to, to 379, yeah. very impressive. There's just a 40, that's, that's a, what is that? It's about a 18%, uh, it's, a, it's a big rally. Yeah, oh, it's more. It's, uh, yeah, that's yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's yeah, 120, 130 bucks, right? Uh, yeah, like 50%. Right, right. Yeah, it's 50%, sorry. Yeah, yes. not bad, I know. No, uh, no, right, <laughs> just to put it to the least. And just some of those numbers, because the numbers are staggering, too. So they're going to be looking for quarterly revenue of, let me zoom in this, we'll get some bigger text. There we go. Quarterly revenue of $4.49 billion on diluted earnings of $0.56 cents a share. They came in last year on $3.7 billion, so quite a number. They'll be increasing at 800 million on 3.7 on a year on year. And the big number that they'll be looking for is about 8.9 million subscribers with, uh, let's see, where were they? About 1.6 million in domestic and international 7.3 million, which is their big number, um, of course, but for it, growth. It's also their forward looking, uh, it's the outlook. I think oh, that's definitely. going to be quite important here. Definitely, maybe, because they did just, um, and to, to bring that in, what did just happen, they had to revise. So originally, let's see where we get, uh, they had to revise. I was reading it, come on. Uh, all right, they had to revise their earnings just recently in January. Um, we'll pull it up. Yeah, so they, they were at 89 cents a share at the end of 2018 as fallen, and you had them revise. So in January, Netflix pointed investors to a quarterly revenue of 449 or 56 cents a share. Um, so they had to revise, and, and we'll see if they can turn that around for sure. So what else are we looking at today, Basil? We got a lot. We have, uh, you, you know. know I, I think it's very important that we have to take into consideration the XLF, which is the financials. Oh, man, right? <clears throat> if you look at the XLF, which has, a, you know, a potpourri of financials, they call Berkshire of financials. It doesn't matter. That's what's there. Um, it's at 27.09, up 12 cents right now. I think it's holding pretty well. And I'm looking at the weekly chart. Remember, we were looking at Netflix a moment ago. Almost the same chart in a leg C in the weekly chart. Look how strong the MACD is here, and look how strong the stochastic is. This is, very, this is what you want to see in Netflix. I didn't see that in the weekly chart. It looked more like it was making an art formation that said, whoa, it better hold support because it could, this is a little different. This is showing that even with Bank of America, I should mention we are long in the 
for my subscribers to my opening call. We're long from much lower down. And uh, it's pulling back 77 today. But you've got holding. Look at this. You've, I, in fact, I always do this when I, I show my charts here on, on my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour. Always put a little flag pat or rectangle formation. When you've gapped up and you haven't taken out the left side low within two days, that's very important because it says you could go sideways. You could even have a little, in a time, shorter time period, have a Chapman Wave peak D going inside that will take you towards or very close or just above the previous high, and that could be the high in the XLF of 2733. I'm impressed at the action so far today. Okay, and of course, earnings yesterday in the banks to kick things off. We had Bank of America this morning. I believe we get Morgan Stanley tomorrow, so we'll have lots of action in that banking market to, to come. Uh, folks, Basil and I will be back in three minutes. Dow's up 53, S&P's positive by five, NASDAQ positive 33. Come on back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined by Basil Chapman this morning. we got markets hanging on to positive territory so far. Dow up about 60. S&P's positive by 5. NASDAQ positive by 33. And, Basil, I saw you breaking down some of those banks over the break. Uh, you want to share with what uh, with me and the viewers what we got going on? I see Morgan I, I, Stanley up there tomorrow. Morgan we had JP, Stanley, we, yep. We had JP, JP Morgan had really excellent everything. Yeah. 
So um, that kind of set the pace to, to be able to, I think uh, Kevin mentioned it, to, so it allowed the XLF to bounce. I'm impressed that the XLF is holding as well as it is. It has very much, I'm going to do this in a moment, let me move this out of the way I just did Morgan Stanley with Chapman Wave Methodology um, notation. So XLF, I'll show the chart on the left. There's that little flag pattern. I'm going to expand that so you can see it better. And nice. that's what, now keep your eye on the left side chart. Yeah, because this the daily's in the left. Okay. Middle is the weekly. On the right is the monthly. Now we're going to get J, JP Morgan, JPM. There it goes. And you see the little flag pattern, a little gap up to the leg B. And that's really very positive. And that's suggesting <clears throat> that maybe you'll have to fill the gap in first, but it does suggest that the 112s, it's at 110.24 right now. But the 112s is probably going to be tested sometime fairly soon. But what's really important about it is if you look at the monthly chart, it has one of the better monthly charts because it made a double top, pulled back very, I've got a theory that goes with this U-shaped pattern with a double top. And it did pull back to about 91, and now it's at 110, and it's getting closer and closer to really important uh, this line right here is going to become a magnet. If it's able to touch the 112s, that's right where this trend line is. Then the previous high um, at 119.24, and the first one was back in February of 119.33. Isn't it interesting? How does a chart know to go eight <laughs> months and then miss making a new high by pennies right. and then pull back so sharp? I've always been... It's, it's absolutely a fascinating thing to look at chart formations and try to understand how in a rising trend line, you've got highs that hit a certain level and then pull back and then they hit the bottom trend line and then they start to move up as if the pattern knows that it's in like a glass tube going up. Uh, you know, you can understand a fund manager recalling exactly a horizontal level. Oh, it made a high of 119 and keep that in mind. But 119, then 117, then 115, how do you do that? So the channel, to me, always implies that there's a certain momentum. Once the prices start to rise, there's a certain emotional momentum that allows it to go up until it gets overbought and then come back to oversold. And that's a rising trend line. It's like a tide so that the boat doesn't know that at low tide it's at one level and at high tide it's at another level. But it does that, and it's still at the bottom of it's, it's still sta it's on top of the water. Yet it's now maybe three feet higher. So it's the same sort of thing. It's like the tide. If you can understand the tides, so I'm looking at this and I'm saying the tide is suggesting that J.P. Morgan should go higher. It should test uh, the very next resistance is up in the 112.90s, and if it breaks that, then it's kind of open to the 115, then 119 area. So. The very important thing now over the next three weeks is to hold. It's at 110. It should hold at 105 to 104 support, regardless of what happens in the market. So I, I think the banks are they've done things correctly. The market is not re really appreciating exactly what they've done. But as when you think of the banks now to the banks in 2008, it's just a completely different scenario. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, and hopefully taking 2008, that type of scenario, out of the equation completely, being a little bit better capitalized, to say the least. Absolutely. So there's a, there's a mention in the den about gold. So we might want to be looking at gold now. Oh, we better get three, there. It's having quite a day, right, to the downside. Yeah, it's, it's down 13 points, uh, 1278. But what's really important for me is you see this. I've got a dashed trend line right here. Okay, that and goes, that's the weekly we're looking at? Yes, okay. Yeah, but I have, to, I have to change a little bit because this is a continuous contract. Continuous contract means that the price will change, not the patterns, but because it gets smoothed out. The price gets changed. So that says that on this, on the basis of this expanding rising wedge, the 1270 level is going to be absolutely imperative to hold. If it closes, not hits it, but as, if it closes on Friday under that, that means that gold can have a deeper correction. So I'm going to be watching this closely. And for, for us, we've been along the dollar for about a year now, and it's not rising in proportion to what gold is going down. Yeah. This is, this is very interesting. So all of a sudden, you've got some, it's, it's holding well, but it's not, at this particular point, with gold having pulled back $30, $40 over a couple of days, um, the dollar should be not at 97 
hey, the dollar index should be 97.40 or 97.60. Yeah. So I'm watching this very closely. Yeah, definitely an interesting move on gold. And um, like you said, I thought the same thing, Basil. I jumped over to the dollar, assuming maybe I saw the gold chart first, and I said to myself, oh, I wonder if the dollar really spiked higher. Um, well, and it was not there, not the type of move that would correlate um, to drill things down. I mean, even since yesterday, uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon yesterday, we're sitting at 1292 gold, and then the sell-off really began at about 820 this morning. We went from 1287 down to a low of 1276 by 930, and just kind of hanging out at these 1278 levels since then. So I mentioned to your dad the other day when he was interviewing me, I said, Tom, you know, you know we might have to be, actually, I started talking about this a little while back. I said, we might have to be looking at compartmentalization, that the relationships are slightly different now to what they've been. Usually you get the counterpoint in gold and the dollar. One goes up, the other one usually goes down. Not, not percentage-wise, but in direction. Yes. But for the first time in a while, one of the things that I always talk about is that every, every year, maybe for four to six weeks at a time, you'll get a period where gold and the dollar might be moving in the same direction, but it's just really just short term and it's not a big move, but they might both go down at the same time, a majority of the days of the week. Uh, but that's usually brief. Otherwise, they're going in counterpoint. So that said to me that we might be looking at gold in a different way than we had, for me anyway. Yes, I no, always no. Thought, I always thought gold is really a factor. It's a fear factor. So that when we saw gold moving higher, but the gold stocks weren't, that said to me, this is countries using gold as leverage for something. When I looked at the dollar, and even though gold was moving higher at some point, the dollar was holding very well. I said, you know what? My thinking is that gold, the dollar is reflecting international, the international view of currencies. Uh, you remember back in the 80s, well, you probably don't remember back, back in the 80s when <laughs> I might. Japanese... We'll see. Uh, Japanese was selling Toyotas, and, okay. and we were just importing and importing and import, and their quality was getting better and better, and we were just buying Jap J Japanese everything. The yen was getting higher, stronger and stronger, as if it, the, the world's countries were looking at Japan as an economic um, bellwether, and therefore the currency did well. And I thought the same thing here with the dollar. The dollar is representing our economy. Hey, maybe the dollar is saying it might be slipping a little bit here. I'm not sure. But yeah. I, that's what I mean by comp comp No, there's a lot of variables. I agree. And there's a lot of variables. Eventually, they have to move a little bit inversely because of how they're priced. But that doesn't mean that other variables, I kind of agree, in a short-term basis. Folks, come on back. Basil and I are going to finish this conversation. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page.
TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. We got the Dow up 38 points currently. s and is positive by 5. NASDAQ positive by 31. So why not, Basil? I see you jumping around the energy complex with some oil up there. Quite another right. mover and shaker. Yes. So um, do you have anything that you're looking at for? Oh, we're already past 1030. <laughs> but was there something that you were going to be looking at specifically? No, so we get was into the oil inventory numbers tomorrow at 1030. Tomorrow, Natural right. gas is okay. on Thursday. Um, my mind's kind of waiting for that Netflix number. Pretty interesting. Uh, you know, myself, Basil, I'm a big fan of Netflix. So it's interesting, the, the fundamental, just kind of you were saying, the, the anecdotal take of things. You know, you're not, so you've never uh, signed up viewed Netflix so, as a customer yourself? Yeah, I do have Netflix, okay. and I'm, I'm always a little dissatisfied because there's stuff that I'd like to, I like to, like, my wife always says, pick a foreign film. So when she says that, it usually means some kind of, uh, some kind of film that has a different genre to what you'd normally see in, in, in uh, say, an American movie. Sure. So I look, and it, I, 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 it's hard for me to scroll through and get on. Oh, Jesus, finally find it. <laughs> but yes, I do use Netflix, but I have a bunch of things that we never use. And I even Hulu, my, my son, I think, gave it to us as a present once. Okay. And I think I, I try to do this and do that. Of course, our 1998 uh, Sony television <laughs> didn't quite adjust to it. Um, and it, I just, it was sitting, and eventually he took it. Um, so... Um, I'm kind of out of the loop in that stuff. No, that's the interesting but, part of it is and nobody I, has time for all of the streaming services, right? So there's going to be I'm winners. Looking, yeah, I've got, I've got so many add-ons that I'm saying, do I need all this stuff? I sure. don't even look at it. And I think a lot of people, you know, cutting the cord in the consumer report for, for a year now, they've had different uh, uh, months where they've actually spent a lot of time on, on cutting the cord from your cable. I think that this is a very interesting era. If you put this together... Um, it's the time of 19... I did my webinar um, two weeks ago on, on the, 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 the compatibility of what, what's happening now, the similarity between the 1920s. You know, in the 1920s, you had color, color, color movies just came in. First it was movies, then color movies, then talking movies. And you also got um, a lot of conflict yet, RCA, there, was, there were a lot of things going on. There was the movie industry, which felt it was in trouble. Little did they know that, yeah, they would be in trouble, but they'd still survive. But it was a very, and then, of course, the Depression came along, and people had to stay home because there wasn't much else to do. So they were looking at, um, they were looking at, uh, they went to the movies, and then television came along. This era is exactly like that. Eventually, we're going to have just three, like you've got General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler. So we're going to get three, and eventually maybe you'll get one, and then uh, and Elizabeth Warren will come along to want to split them up. <laughs> one does not work, I mean, this work, is the way right? it is. Nothing changes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. 
You know, one so, thing, I don't know if you've ever seen the series Basil on CNN. They have like the 80s, they have the 90s, they do decades. I think they had the 70s, so it's documentary yeah. style. And um, I believe it was in the 80s, and they talked about the VCR and how the studios um, launched a huge legal battle to, to argue that it was basically an illegal product, right? Taping their products to allow that to happen. Um, they lost that, thankfully. And right. um, little beknownst to them, though, that turned out to be the best thing that could have happened because it took off in terms of um, rentals for the movies and this whole industry that they hadn't even factored in, just kind of pointing to the fact that uh, we all can't kind of anticipate how the world can change when you throw technology in there. And they thought I, it was going to doom them. Nonetheless, it launched um, basically everything after, you know... Be, um, because of many other concurrent events, and of course the Depression was very important because that made entertainment absolutely necessary. People had to line up to go out to spend their pennies or whatever it was because they needed that relief, that entertainment. That's all they had. This is... The same thing, but in a very different way, because it's all at, in your home. So yes. there's, there's a big difference. And I always think of this as, I know I've got tapes and recordings when I was a professional musician. I've got done, I've got like, maybe a hundred and something cassette tapes alone, let alone the old uh, reel-to-reel of performance and stuff. I've never really taken the trouble to put them on to whatever the medium is Digitize, right now. Digitize, sure, yeah. Yeah, it's a big effort to do that, yes. and I haven't done So I'm thinking this is going to be very interesting in 150, 200, 300, 400 years. Oh, my God. Are we, go are, we going to have a, are we going to have a missing era? Because the digital stuff from the transition to the different medium just kind of left a whole bunch of written material gone. What happens to the written material that lasted thousands and thousands of the Dead Sea Scrolls. What do you do? How do you do that electronically? Maybe in space they have someone searching for Amazon's the Dead Sea Amazon's going to own right. it all on the cloud, Basil. They'll save it I all in so. service for everybody. Jeff Bezos. But, but it's just interesting to think of it in, you know, in the context of historical... Oh, uh, it's amazing. Anyway. And when you start talking about that, I mean, it's amazing where we'll be in 50 years on a world scale technology-wise. Flying cars, automated self-driving flying cars, let alone 100, yeah. 200 years. Um, That's right. I always think of Mozart. What, what, what would Mozart do today? Well, you know, what's interesting is technology gets to the point where you press a button and it works. So yes. even a Mozart could theoretically work on a computer after a few seconds because, you know, you got your buttons, you press it. You don't have to know the incredible uh, cycle that went through to get to that point, but it gets there. So I'm looking at crude oil. Let's go and I'm for saying, it. Yeah, crude oil has held very well. And I think it's important that crude oil actually holds well because I think it's part of our economy. We, I, personally, I, I like to see not crude oil screaming to the upside, but up in the in the 58 to 65 area, 66, I think it's kind of good. And that's where we are right now. We're at 63.57. And the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart is at 65.07. I suspect we could bounce a little over that, a little under that. So I think crude oil is holding very well. And I suspect it's going to uh, hold for a little while longer. I think that's important. And uh, you were talking about natural gas. Now, that's not, not my forte at all. because and natural kind of gas has not thing. held very well on the vice and, versa. And, and would you have thought that six months ago with those terrible, every news report had uh, Midwest 25 inches of yes. snow. And uh, you wouldn't have thought that. And look at this natural gas. It goes from almost $5, $4, and uh, what is that, 4.872 yep. back in November, and now it's trading at $2.58. And it almost That's hasn't incredible. even slowed down, right? I mean, you look at that weekly, it's been a slow, steady decline. A couple pops in there, I see, but pretty much every single week, especially um, lately, going back a month or two, it's just been steady declines. And this has got a pattern in the weekly chart that I, I call the Eiffel Tower, where it goes straight up and straight down. Look at this. You'll see it right here in the weekly chart. See this big A? Look at this pattern right here. That straight fits up, it well. There straight you go. Down. Parabolic yeah. in, a, in a dramatic way. Yeah. So I'm not sure what it's telling us other than this season, there must have been a glut of natural gas. Yeah, you know, one of the things I think, Basil, we break it down, I think, um, like, the normal... Um, inventory levels are actually below where they usually are, which is what given has given some people, I think, some time to be a little bullish, but every single week it just trades lower. It just fails. It yeah. does. 
All right, you? folks, Basil and I will be right back. We got markets hanging in positive territory. Dow up 38 points, S&P positive by just two now, NASDAQ positive by 21. We'll be back in three minutes. Come on back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the Dow up 41, S&P's positive by 3, NASDAQ positive by 22. Basil, real briefly, in the final segment here, you had mentioned that archive workshop you did a couple weeks ago, just earlier this month, April 3rd. I have up here the page um, that subscribers to the opening call gain access to with some of your archive webinars, hour and a half long. And you can see the archives in here, folks. If you sign up for the opening call, I encourage you. Basil's awesome daily service. You gain access to those archive workshops, including the one back in December as well, and then October. So three 90-minute workshops, and then, of course, Basil's opening call service. And Basil, just talking real briefly about that workshop you did a couple weeks ago that subscribers can gain access to um, and what you talked about in there. So it was a workshop that I was basically talking about what I expected for 2018, 2019. I think 19 and, and 20, right? Is that what you mean? Did I mean that? We're, we're there. Time is moving quickly. Wow. It's amazing. I know. <laughs> Believe me, it is. So 2019, 2020, what I was anticipating, the chart formations, what sectors I thought would be participants. We already, for my opening call, subscribers, we're already in some of those sectors. Uh, what we're looking at is certain 
period in time that says uh, there should be a catch-up in the weaker sectors. We're trying to identify those. And there should be leadership in sectors that were leaders before. And there should be something new. And we're looking for what's new. So that's what I do. And, and there was a relationship, as I said earlier on, <clears throat> between the 1920s and the period now and where I think we're headed. So it was a very important, very, it was one of, perhaps one of the most important uh, webinars because I've discussed things that I've kind of held back for a long time waiting for the correct time, and I think the timing was right. Perfect. Well, folks, check it out right under newsletters, the opening call. He's got a great webinar just from a couple weeks, lots of action in there, and you gain immediate access to that on top of Basil's awesome daily service. Basil, always a pleasure to do the program with you. I appreciate you joining me this morning. Thank you so much, And, Tommy. of course, we look forward to the show at noon Eastern time. Great. Folks, stay tuned. Fast Market coming up right now, Basil at noon, live programming all day. Have a great Tuesday.